Death is an inevitability in TV shows, and it stings all that much more when it happens to a character who you've perhaps grown to love over the course of many seasons. And while we're often simply waiting for beloved characters to die given the fraught nature of their work, other times characters are killed off totally out of nowhere in genuinely shocking fashion. And so with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 TV characters nobody expected to die. Number 10, David Palmer in 24. You won't find a more innately good character in 24 than David Palmer, the Democratic presidential candidate targeted for assassination in the show's first season, yet spared thanks to the efforts of CTU agent Jack Bauer. Palmer went on to become president in the show's second season, which concluded with a cliffhanger ending where he was attacked with a biological nerve agent. But Palmer survived again, and so by the time season 3 rolled around, he truly felt invincible. Palmer didn't seek re-election due to personal scandal but nevertheless reappeared for a few episodes throughout season 4. Beyond being the first black president in the world of the show, and predating Barack Obama's election by more than five years, Palmer was 24's moral centre, and by the time he'd survived two hit attempts and left office, it seemed apparent that he had some triple reinforced plot armour. But disaster struck mere minutes into season 5, when, while the opening credits were still rolling, Palmer was suddenly shot and killed by a sniper totally out of nowhere. As gutting and truly unexpected as it was to see Palmer finally go down, it nevertheless served as an emotional catalyst for one of the show's strongest seasons. Number 9, Tara McClay in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Tara McClay is an undeniable fan favourite Buffy character, the conscience of the Scooby Gang whose relationship with Willow was majorly groundbreaking for primetime TV of its era. And after three seasons on the show, fans were thrilled to see Tara finally included in the opening title sequence in the late season 6 episode Seeing Red. If nothing else, this indicated she was a safe character moving forward, right? But Joss Whedon sure loves to traumatise his fans by suddenly offing beloved characters. And so, in this very episode, Tara is killed by a stray bullet fired by Warren Mears. As it turns out, Whedon only added Amber Benson to the episode's opening titles to throw fans off, because who would expect her to die in the very episode where she finally got added to the credits roll? Unsurprisingly, Tara's death infuriated a good portion of the fan base, with some even characterising it as an example of the tired bury a gaze trope, while others defended it as necessary in furthering Willow's character development. Either way, it remains undeniably shocking. Number 8, Alex Kamal in The Expanse. The minds behind Amazon's hit sci-fi show The Expanse were put in an extremely tough spot when Cass Anvar, the actor who plays Rosanante pilot Alex Kamal, was faced with more than 30 allegations of sexual misconduct. The allegations came to light after the show's fifth season had wrapped shooting, prompting production company Alcon Entertainment to launch their own investigation, which ultimately resulted in Anvar not returning to the show's sixth and final season. But given that Alex was one of the show's primary characters and remains present in the books, Fans began speculating on how he would be written out for season 6. For most, it seemed likely that Alex would be called away from the Rocinante for personal reasons, and that would be that. And so fans were shocked when, in the season 5 finale, Alex unexpectedly died of a stroke during a docking manoeuvre. This was achieved by digitally manipulating existing footage of Anvar in the pilot's chair to make him look dead, while also integrating newly shot footage referencing his demise. It was a major surprise to see Alex killed off rather than simply retired from the show due to Anvar's personal issues. And while the execution of Alex's death proved divisive with fans due to the slightly iffy CGI and overall disjointed feel, it proved that the showrunners took the allegations very seriously. Number 7, Laverne Roberts in Scrubs. For a show that dabbled so much in death, it's pretty surprising that Scrubs' large cast of recurring characters were pretty much untouchable. That is, until midway through the show's sixth season. Outspoken nurse Laverne Roberts, who appeared in more than 80 episodes throughout the first six seasons, is left in a coma following a car accident in the episode My Long Goodbye, ultimately succumbing to her injuries and passing away. Of all the many emotional death scenes throughout the series, this one hit especially hard because it involved a character who'd been with the audience since the beginning. Apparently, Scrubs creator Bill Lawrence only killed Laverne off because he believed season 6 to be the show's last, but upon it being unexpectedly renewed, he hilariously decided to give Aloma Wright another role as compensation, another nurse by the name of Shirley Richards. Such launched a running gag where only JD noticed Shirley's resemblance to Laverne, even giving her the nickname Laverne again. 
Number 6. Tanya McQuad Hunt in The White Lotus The White Lotus's formula is elegantly simple. Somebody dies, or in the case of the second season, multiple people die, at one of the lush White Lotus resorts, and the audience spends the season trying to figure out who it might be. One of the first season's primary characters is Tanya McQuad Hunt, the ditzy billionaire heiress who quickly became a fan favourite, enough that she ended up returning for season 2 with more deaths seemingly taking place in her orbit. The moment that Jennifer Coolidge was confirmed to be the sole major character returning from the first season, it seemed clear that Tanya would be the series' overall protagonist, with most fans assuming that she was the single bulletproof character who would recur for as many seasons as the show lasted. But creator Mike White exploited this assumption perfectly, as Tanya actually ends up dying in the season 2 finale, when while escaping assassins in a dinghy, she slips, hits her head and drowns. It was a genuinely shocking moment that brilliantly defied audience expectations, assuring them that nobody is safe moving forward. Number 5. Lawrence Kuttner in House Lawrence Kuttner joined House at the start of its fourth season as a new member of House's diagnostic team, and it's safe to say that nobody saw his shocking, tragic demise coming. In the late season 5 episode Simple Explanation, Kuttner doesn't turn up for work, and when his colleagues visit his apartment, they find that he's committed suicide having shot himself. The reason for this? Actor Cal Penn took a job working for the Obama administration in the White House, as necessitated him being suddenly written out of house. Rather than simply have him say, transfer away to another hospital for personal or professional reasons, the decision was made to use Penn's exit to open a dialogue about the often sudden and seemingly unexplained nature of suicide. A major plot point of the episode is that House struggles to comprehend why Kuttner would take his own life, even preferring to suspect foul play at first, and while his death remains divisive to this day, it was certainly effective in conveying the below-the-radar nature of depression. Number 4. Nate Fisher in Six Feet Under Six Feet Under is a show utterly immersed in death in every single moment, but for the most part it felt like the central members of the Fisher family were basically safe. Yet by far the most endangered Fisher throughout the show's run was protagonist Nate, who in season 2 is diagnosed with a potentially fatal brain condition. However, Nate undergoes surgery at the end of the season, and that seems to be that. Yet in the second half of the fifth and final season, Nate suddenly collapses from a huge stroke related to that condition, and though he appears to survive in the next episode, ultimately dies from complications. Nate was a character who truly seemed like he'd been through enough existential torment throughout the show, and despite his health issues would make it to the end in one piece. But instead, creator Alan Ball made the shock decision to kill the series' main character with three episodes left, each of which tragically explored the fallout of Nate's death before pulling the trump card in the series' finale, flashing forward to reveal how every single major character died. Number 3. Andrea Cantillo in Breaking Bad Breaking Bad is another show where truly virtuous, even innocent characters are in starkly short supply. And in the very least, Jesse's girlfriend Andrea was hugely sympathetic, a recovering drug addict raising her young son Brock as a single parent and serving as a much-needed calming presence for the embattled Jesse. Andrea seemingly suffered her grand torment at the end of the show's fourth season, when Brock was near-fatally poisoned by Walt, but mercifully pulled through. But because that wasn't enough, in the show's penultimate episode, Andrea is murdered by Todd in retaliation for Jesse attempting to escape the Aryan Brotherhood's compound. Jesse is forced to watch as Andrea is shot in the head, leaving poor Brock without his mother. Breaking Bad had its fair share of cruel, harsh deaths throughout the years, but it truly seemed like Andrea was safe alongside her son, no matter how much danger Jesse brought into her life. Number 2. Tracy McConnell in How I Met Your Mother How I Met Your Mother finally introduced the titular mother, Tracy McConnell, at the end of the sitcom's eighth season, and she appeared in every episode of the show's ninth and final season. The mystery was over and Ted Mosby had seemingly gotten his happy ending, except that the writers had one cruel final gut punch in store for fans. The series finale, Last Forever, reveals that Tracy dies of an unspecified illness in 2024, before we return to the show's 2030 framing device where Ted's kids encourage him to seek out Robin, who he clearly still has feelings for. It's an ending that left most fans majorly sour due to the highly manipulative nature of Tracy's demise, that is, using her shock death as a device to push Ted back into the arms of Robin, who, if we're honest, he was never that well suited for anyway. The mother dying was such a batshit crazy 
idea that most fans couldn't even begin to entertain it, making it all the more jaw-dropping and infuriating when the showrunners actually decided to do it. The backlash was significant enough that an alternate ending was eventually released on the season's DVD, where Tracy survives and stays with Ted. Number 1. Mara and Jackson Vendrell in The Shield it's perhaps fitting that a series which started with one of the most shocking deaths in TV history also ended with not one, but two. While it didn't surprise anyone that cop serial The Shield's final episode Family Meeting saw the volatile Shane Vendrell finally meet a brutal end, nobody could have expected that he'd take his family down with him. With his arrest for his various crimes imminent, Shane shoots himself in the head as the police breach his house, after which the cops discover his wife Mara and young son Jackson dead in the bedroom. Their bodies stage to look peaceful. Shane's suicide note later reveals that he poisoned them before shooting himself, committing what's referred to by law enforcement as a family annihilation, murder-suicide which eliminates the entire family unit. The series creator Sean Ryan later stated that the Vendrell family's demise was inspired by the similar murder-suicide of wrestler Chris Benoit and his family. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then please let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.